Today, so we're going to have a look at equations of circles. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes. I'm going to kick start with this question. So this isn't actually a specific question. It's more just having a talk about the actual uh, equation of a circle. So we've got this circle equation here, which is x squared plus y squared equals 25. Now, when it comes to equations of circles, the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared and that equals the radius squared, which I'm going to call r squared. Okay, And you can see that on this diagram here. So this is the actual equation of this circle, x squared plus y squared equals 25. And you can see the centre is at zero, and that's something that's going to be very specific to the uh, circles that we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at all circles with a, with a centre zero, unless uh, it explicitly said otherwise. But if you actually have a look, you can see that the radius extends to this point here on the 5, up here on the 5, at the top, on the negative 5 over here, and on the negative 5 down here. If you think about the actual coordinates at these points, the coordinate at this one, for example, is 5, 0. And if we were to sub these points into the equation of our circle up here, x squared plus y squared equals 25, we would get 5 squared for x plus 0 squared. And 5 squared is 25, 0 squared is 0, and we get our answer. 25. So you can see actually those points do actually work in that equation. It gives us the answer 25. And likewise for all those other points that I've highlighted. But if we have a think about why it also works for some of the others, it's quite hard to see here, but there's another coordinate just here. And the coordinate here is 4, 3. And if we sub those points in as well, you know, let's have a look what we get. We get 4 squared plus 3 squared. 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, and 16 add 9 is 25. And that works for all the other four threes as well. We've got 4, negative 3, we've got negative 4, negative 3, and we've got negative 4, positive 3 on this coordinate there. And it doesn't matter if we sub the negative number in because negative 4 squared is still 16. Likewise, negative 3 squared is still positive 9. So that gives us those coordinates there. And there's a few more that we can actually get that are whole numbers here. We've got 3, 4 there, um, which we, again we can sub in, but it's the same numbers, isn't it? It's just 3 and 4 the other way around, so 3, 4. And again, you sub those in, obviously we're going to get the same answer here, but 3 squared plus 4 squared is 9 plus 16, which is 25. These all equal 25, so you can see why this circle equation actually forms this circle, because you've got the negative 3, 4 there, you've got the negative 3, negative 4 there, and you've got 3, negative 4 down here. Now, they are the only whole number coordinates that work on this circle. But you can kind of see, obviously, how the circle is constructed via this equation now, and you can see why it is what it is. But this is what you need to remember, really. You need to remember x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. So likewise, if we are also trying to find the radius of the circle, and we have the equation but no diagram, we would know that in order to get the radius from the 25, we would just do the square root of 25, and that would give us our radius there, which is... And you can see on the diagram there the radius is 5. This is very specific to circles with centre 0, 0 though, or at the origin. Uh, and that's what we're going to be having a look at, obviously, unless it explicitly says that the centre is somewhere else. But let's have a look at a couple of little questions. OK, so a nice quick one here. It says, what is the radius of a circle with the equation x squared plus y squared equals 12.25? Obviously, it would be a lot easier if the number at the end there was like a nice square number, because obviously it's nice and easy to square root that. But to get the radius from here we just have to square root 12.25. So the square root of 12.25, obviously this would be a, a calculator question, potentially not, we'll have a look at how to approach it if it wasn't calculator, but if we're on the calculator, the square root 12.25, and it comes out as seven over two, which if I turn into a decimal, comes out as 3.5. So there's the radius there. Nice and easy with a calculator. If you didn't have a calculator for this, you would have to take a slightly different approach. We'd have to turn that into a fraction, which would be 12 and a quarter. Make that top heavy. So 12 times the 4 is 48 plus the 1 is 49. So we get 49 over 4. And then we could square root that. And when you square root that, you can see you've got a nice square number on the top and the bottom there. The square root of 49 is 7. The square root of 4 is 2. And we get the answer there, 7 over 2, which you convert back into a, frac uh, a top heavy, uh, sorry, a mixed number or a decimal. 7 divided by 2 is 3.5 or 3.5. And then we go, we get our answer 3.5. So we can take a little bit, a bit of approach there, thinking about uh, how we could do that um, using non-calculator methods as well. But the majority of the time, that is going to be a calculator-style question there. Let's have a look at a slightly different question. 
Okay, so a circle has the equation x squared plus y squared equals 20. And are these points out, inside, outside, or on the circumference of the circle? Now we know if it's on the circumference of the circle if these points equal 20, because it says that it equals 20 there. So if we sub them in, let's see what we get. So for the first one, 2, 5. If I sub them in, 2 is the x coordinate there, so 2 squared plus 5 squared. And let's see what we get. 2 squared is 4. 5 squared is 25, 4 plus 25 is 29. So that those numbers there are bigger than 20, and therefore it would be on the outside of the circle. Okay, If it's bigger than 20 there, 29 is quite a bit bigger, so that would be on the outside of the circle. Okay, Definitely not on the circumference, which is what we're going to be using this mostly for, looking at if it's on the circumference or not. Let's look at this next one. So subbing those in, the x coordinate there is 1, so 1 squared, 4 squared, what does that equal? 1 plus 16. 1 plus 16 is 17. That's less than 20, so that's on the inside of the circle. There we go. Those coordinates are not big enough to equal that 20 there that dictates whether it's on the circumference. And I'm moving on to the last one. 4 and 2. If we sub those in, we get 4 squared. Add 2 squared. 4 squared is 16. 2 squared is 4. And 16 plus 4 equals 20. There we go. So that would be on the circumference. There we go. And this is really just going to be used just to be aware of the fact that if we have a point on the circumference, it definitely fits within that equation there. And that can be quite handy if we only know one of the coordinates. So take, for example, this one. If we only knew that the coordinate was 4 something, let's call that something x, we could find out what that coordinate is because we know it has to equal 20. And we could sub it in that we'd get 4 squared plus x squared equaling 20. And we could just solve that like an equation. 4 squared is 16, so we could take away 16 from both sides. And we'd get x squared equals 4. And then we could square root that and get x equals 2. And there's our coordinate 2 that we knew it was anyway. But we can take that approach, obviously, knowing that they have to equal 20 or whatever the equation of the circle is. We can take that approach to know that we, it has to balance and therefore we can find any missing coordinates as well. And obviously just having that little bit of an understanding. If the number's bigger, it's outside. And if it's smaller, it's on the inside. A couple of little questions to practice here. Just remember, obviously, you square root the number at the end to get the radius. We didn't have to in this question. In this case, case it would have given us a third look. We'd have to do the square root of 20 for the radius which would give us a third. Obviously we could look at simplifying that, but we're not actually looking at that in this question, but we could simplify that third. But that would be how we would find the radius of this circle as well. So there's a few questions for you to have a go at. Okay, so a few little questions. Have a go at these. Uh, pause the video there, and we'll go to the answer in a sec. Okay, so for the first one. The radius of this circle, well, we just have to square root that number at the end. So the square root of 36, and that gives us a whole number. Nice one there. 6 is our radius. For the next one, we have to do the square root of 20.25. So typing it on the calculator, you get 4.5. Of course, you could have tried doing that without a calculator as well. 20.25 is 20 and a quarter. And if you make that top heavy, 20 times 4 is 80, plus the 1 is 81. So it's 81 over 4. And if you square root that, you get 9 over 2, which is 4.5 as well. So you can use either of those answers and methods of doing it, but there you go, there's a way of doing it without a calculator as well. Right, the last the last one here, it says a circle has the equation x squared plus y squared equals 34. Are these inside, outside, or on the circumference? So if we sub them in, 2 squared plus 5 squared is 4 plus 25 is 29. And that is smaller than 34, so that's inside. On to the next one, 5 squared plus 3 squared, which is 25 plus 9. 25 plus 9 is 34. That's on the circumference. And the last one here, 4 squared plus 5 squared is 16 plus 25, which is 41, which is outside. There you go, bigger than 34 there. Right, there we go. So there's just a bit of an understanding about the actual circle equation, how we can use it to find the radius, and also how we can use it to determine if points are on the circumference or not. Let's have a look at actually using this then. Okay, so the point 3, 4 lies on the circumference of a circle, centre 0, 0. We'll work out the equation of the circle. Now, it's quite a nice, actual, easy way of doing this, because if we know that this point is definitely on the circumference, then we can just use our equation of a circle. And there's two different ways I'm going to look at this, but I'm going to start off with this one, because this one's quite a nice one. Now, we know the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared 
equals the radius squared. So if we just plug these numbers in, 3 squared being the x coordinate, y being the 4, so 4 squared, and that's going to again equal the radius squared. So if we work this out, we get 9 plus 16, which equals 25. Again, that equals the radius squared. So if that equals 25, then we can write our equation there. So we have x squared plus y squared equals 25. There we go. And although it doesn't ask for it, again, we could think about what the radius is here. If we did the square root of 25, we would get 5 as our radius. Okay. So obviously that's not part of the question here. It says work out the equation of the circle. But just thinking about that as well, you could get, actually get the radius there as 5. Now, if the centre wasn't at 0, it'd be a little bit trickier to do because we couldn't just sub it straight in. So we'll have a look at another way that you could look at this because we're going to have a look at one where uh, the equation of the circle, there we go, is not... Um, at centre zero zero. But if we think about this as a little diagram, I'm going to do a little sketch of this. So if we had our circle, we've got centre zero zero, three four, let's just say it's up here. If we wanted to find the length of the radius, which obviously would help us to find the equation of the circle, we could actually draw this in. And it's quite a good skill to be able to have here to be able to do this for the progression of this topic. But if we actually draw a line going from 0, 0 to 3, 4 and think about the kind of shape we've, that we've, we could make here. So we can make a little right angle triangle. And thinking about what this little right angle triangle looks like going from 0, 0 to 3, 4. Well if it goes from 0 to 3 on the x coordinate, that is a run here or a change in x of 3. And going from 0 to 4, that is a rise or a change in y of 4. So actually we could use Pythagoras to work out the length of the radius here. So I could just do a bit of Pythagoras. So uh, square them both, add them together and square root them. So 3 squared plus 4 squared and then square root our answer which is the square root of 25 and the square root of 25 is 5. So there we go, that's another way of showing that the radius is 5. And then once you've got that you can obviously put it into your circle equation x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared and again squaring that 5 to get your 25 to get your, square, to get your equation of the circle there. Okay, something slightly trickier here. We've got some thirds involved in the point that's on the circle. So it says this point here, root 5 over 2 and root 5, lies on the circumference of a circle, centre 0, 0. Work out the length of the radius. Okay, so we'll have a look at both here. We'll get the length of the radius and we'll get the equation of the circle as well. But let's just have a look. Now we know we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. There we go. It's at centre 0, 0, so we can just sub this point straight in. So if we sub them in, our x coordinate there would be root 5 over 2 squared plus root 5 squared, and that's going to equal r squared. And obviously, if you're not sure about thirds here, it would be wise just to have a look at my thirds video, which is in my uh, playlists in the number section or in the thirds section. You can have a little look at some of the thirds there. But just thinking about how we treat thirds, so root 5 over 2. So if we square the top, root 5 times root 5 on the top is just 5. And 2 times 2 on the bottom is 4, so that's 5 quarters. Plus root 5 squared, or root 5 times root 5, is just the whole number 5. There we go. And we're going to have to work that out. So five and a quarter plus five. Now five and a quarter is one and a quarter. So I could rewrite this again. So I've got one and a quarter plus five, which adds together to make six and a quarter. There we go. And that there is our radius squared. So we could actually write the equation of the circle from this, but let's have a look. Now this, without a calculator, is something we're gonna to have to square root that to actually find the length of the radius now, because that is our r squared. So we could actually write the equation of the circle. We could say x squared plus y squared equals six and a quarter, but now we actually have to be able to square root this. So square rooting this without a calculator is a little bit trickier, but we actually have looked at this method earlier in the video. I need to make this here a top heavy fraction. If I have a calculator, nice and easy, just type it in. Let's have a look at doing it without a calculator. So we have x squared plus y squared equals, and if we make that top heavy, six times four is 24, add the one, is 25, so it's 25 over four. Right, so to get the actual, the actual radius here, we need to square root 25 over 4. 
So square root 25 over 4, and you'll notice hopefully that those two are nice square numbers. So the square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 4 is 2, so it's 5 over 2, which you could write as a decimal as well. You could write that as 2.5. And again, if you'd have just typed it straight into a calculator, it probably just would have given you 2.5 straight off. But there we go, there's the length of the radius, 2.5. Right, quite a lot of steps there. I probably could have skipped some of the steps that I'm writing down. I don't really need to write out the equation of the circle every time and, and rewriting it, but it's quite a good, quite a good um, practice just to get into writing it out straight away so that you recognize that equation. Right, here's the last question for you to have a go at then. Okay, so this is very similar to the one I've just done. You've got two third um, coordinates there. So sub that into the equation of the circle uh, and try and find the length of the radius. So pause the video there, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Right, okay, so let's plug these in. So we have root 74 over two squared as our x squared, plus root seven over two squared as our y squared, and that's gonna equal the radius squared. Okay, so squaring the left one there, root 74 times root 74 is 74, and two times two is four. So we have 74 over four, plus root seven times root seven is seven, over four, and that equals r squared. All right, let's add those together. So 74 quarters add seven quarters, or 74 plus seven is 81. So we have 81 over four. There we go. And that we could plug in as our r squared. So we have x squared plus y squared equals 81 over four. You can convert it back into a decimal as you if you want. But I think as we've got a square root this, because that's r squared, let's actually just go ahead and square root that because they are both square numbers there. The square root of 81 is 9, the square root of 4 is 2, so it's 9 over 2, or 4.5 or 4.5, and that is the length of the radius. Again, you could write the equation of the circle down here. We could have written x squared plus y squared equals 81 over 4, but it didn't ask for the equation of the circle, it just wanted us to find the length of the radius. So there we go, something a little bit different just to finish off there, and a little bit of thirds. and again, do check out my uh, third playlist if you're more unsure on some of the third work that I did just there. But that's the end of the video. If it was useful, if it was helpful, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.